Hello, it's me again, Roland Jung, showing you how efficient engineering is when a plan becomes e plan. We all know the e pulse, do you? E pulse, e pulse, when you load on here, e pulse, you get to our e pulse, our cloud solution where we can share projects with any of you out there. So you don't have to use ePlan, you just want to see projects that were done in ePlan. So this is what I'm doing here. I'm just going into the ePulse, I was invited to, and I'm going to check out one of the projects that you've seen uh, over the last few videos, this project here. And I, of course, uh, this is my project. This is a project we've been talking about. And I do have uh, uh, something I saw here a little bit earlier. If I zoom in in this corner here, I somewhat, I'm missing a main disconnect switch. So I'm going to quickly add this. Very quickly, a redlining. Let's add a new redlining here in this area. So um, uh, maybe the best way to actually present this is if we can put a square somewhere in this area here. And what it is, it's primarily is a main disconnect. I'll just call it MDSC. Everyone understands what that is. Uh, to be more precise here, let's talk about what kind of a main disconnect we want. What main disconnect um, with the rotary switch, rotary rotary switch one of those you know where on the door uh, you have a handle um, Siemens has them Siemens uh, Siemens usually um, they will call them something like 3LD 2013 something in that range okay so of course uh, where this will show up is most likely uh, is going to be somewhere in the on 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 the panel so we should actually see, especially here in the assembly portion on that page, uh, what we want, uh, we want here in this area, we want somewhere a disconnect switch. So I could actually uh, mark it up here in this area and say this, this is roughly where I want it. Okay, this is uh, the uh, position of MDS, M DSC. And um, of course, I can lock this down here to the review and see what, uh, what and where it can be positioned. And this is the challenge. Okay. So of course, once this is registered, this is my EF view. I just forget about this and I this is the kind of switch I was talking about here so you can see there is a, a long rod with a rotary switch and this is my main disconnect in the back so this is exactly what I'm looking for so I'm going to go for ePlan and I will go of course in the data portal and in here I will check it out if it's there now it is here so of course beautiful I can now choose whichever I want and I can come and place it. So no big deal if I place this one here. I can just try and drop it. Um, of course, uh, if we are a little bit more careful, I would actually place it on the back plate. Uh, so let's place it here on the back plate. Let's go on the front view. And again, uh, is it still sticking to my mouse? No, I'll just uh, grab it again here. It's very quick, so no big deal. You just download it and you can come here and position it. So, of course, positioning it, this would be one place where we could place it here on the DIN rail here, and that would most likely work out. But now I find something, I find out that for some reason, when you look at it, you know, if you rotate this panel. Um, you you primarily uh, can see here, so this is uh, the, the switch that is actually rotated in somewhat. It's coming out there, so I have to cut the rod. Now, how does that work? 
what I figured out is let's take a look at the macros uh, that came with it. And here is my macro project. So I actually pulled it in. And what I figured out in this case is that Siemens actually locked it up in one entire one big uh, object. So handle, uh, rod, and switch are all one object. So technically, um, what we have to do is we have to figure a way to actually cut it in part. So if I, I look it up, my uh, object here, it's all one logic item. So I can't break it up. And uh, this is what they did, is they, they pretty much created this uh, like in one object. This is when you order it. But what I had decided to do is actually go and get the parts separately. Uh, so when I got them from the CAX, so what is a CAX? Uh, CAX at Siemens, if you actually go to one of these devices here, um, you look up the part, they actually linked it up here in one of those documents. You can call it up. It's a CAX, it's, it's really an area on the Siemens website where they support you with extra data the CAD X data, the CAX data. And when you are here, you can actually order different items. And what I did is, this is the CAX download section here. Uh, I created myself, um, so you have to log in. Obviously this is Siemens, right? They wanna know who you are. You can create some request, which I did here, which was completed. And I then got the files. And these are the step files that actually were then sent to me. And I imported these step files into my ePlan. So uh, this is the result of what I got imported. And I broke it up. Basically, I'm looking at these three parts and I will handle them separately. So I created one here with this one. I created another one for the rod. And I created the third one for this one here. Now, of course, when I use this, I created an assembly. So the assembly um, is an assembly that positions only the object in the back, right? So instead of placing um, the whole thing, I'm just placing this one. Then I created a variable object for this one, which I can prolong if I need to, to the length that I need. And I created this one that I place on the top. So what this gave me at the end is, of course, instead of placing this object like in one whole object, I ended up, <coughs> placing it in uh, two different parts. So I started by placing the assembly uh, in the back. Let me just show you very quickly. So here I start by placing on the mounting panel here. So here, front view, I'm gonna place, insert a device. And I created basically off of this part number that came in, I created an assembly. So the assembly is a pseudo part, if you want, that has um, the, here, the accessory of the rod and the handle I can place, even with a placement, and it only rep is represented by one part number. Now, this is the cool part because I can now here assign a macro for just that specific component, okay? And I can place that handle in the back. So when I place the assembly here, I just go and place this guy, okay? This is basically the start. Let's see. Now, some of you uh, came up with a question not too long ago. Can you be very precise in saying, okay, I want this five millimeters to the right of this object, and this is the placement option. So you will have a five millimeter offset exactly here. Now comes the, the next portion. I created what we, in ePlan, um, we do that with uh, rails. I created with the rod, basically a rail. Now the rail starts right here on this uh, handle point here, and it starts on the rod variable because I want to modify it. So of course I do have to check it out a little bit like this. And this basically allows me to just pull it out here to a certain length. Now, you may have to rotate it. And so you can actually pull it out uh, you know, to uh, where you want. And I'm just gonna pull it there, no big deal, like that. 
And now that I have a certain length here, I don't know because I don't see the door, I'm gonna switch over to the door. And on the door, this is where basically I will be placing, and not only by displaying the door, I also display the objects in the back there. So what I do is I activate directly this surface and I go and show additionally what's in the back. So this will actually help me align these objects very nicely together, right? So now, last but not least, is placing the handle itself. Um, so the handle is still the same component with just the handle itself. So here we can actually drill down, find the component that I copied and pasted basically. So this is my handle here, right? And the handle has as an object only that object. Obviously I placed the handle right dead center. And now what I can do is I can just place, dump it here and say, okay, I want to go with the uh, center of the rod, right? That's, that's perfect. And uh, this will place it right on the surface that I marked up there. Um, that's one way of doing it. Or the other way of doing it is just by placing it here, boom, and door outside. There we go, that's the mounting surface, and you get it on the door outside. And you need this for the NC drilling because this object will require some NC drilling, two holes uh, that are to be ordered. And this is the whole idea behind it. And boom, you got it. So this is how I placed it. Now, maybe the uh, definition or the naming convention right now, I didn't give it any name, but I could actually call this the MDSC2. And in the displayed format here, I can actually even display it and say, okay, I want this on the uh, top uh, center outside. And you should actually see then the displayed DT at the outside there. Now, of course, the good old trick of copying what you already did before, like here with the copy format and the paste format also works, boom, like this. And of course, anything you do here will then show up as you want, not only in the kitting list, but also in the assembly uh, page that we had earlier. So here I could open directly the assembly page, or I could even go with the, remember the red lining that we have? because I can open this and this will pretty much <clears throat> tell me what red linings are available here, right? In um, this, let me just connect, uh, open, open. Uh, maybe we have to just reconnect here to see actually the red lining live that were done on the other side. I wasn't connected, there's no reason. So eView free. This now connects to the redlining that I did earlier, right? And here I can open this project, which is this one, and I can see the position and the main disconnect. I can see that page. It will open right away in this area here. So here I can say that, yeah, okay, I have to place that disconnect, which I already did. So remember when it's done, you can actually say, not only do I approve it, but I'll go straight up and I have done the changes. So these changes are already done. I will go for the next uh, redlining, which is the alignment of the position here. So this is where roughly it should go. You can see model view not up to date. All you have to do because you placed it is to simply update this and your main disconnect is there. So it may not end up exactly in the spot that was identified by the redlining. And this is maybe something that I may want to put in here. The position is relative to what is in the back plate, right? So uh, it had to be moved a little bit. So you can also say, you know, I had to move it slightly, was moved slightly. A bit to the right, but in line with MDSC2. So there we go. It's perfect. Now, last but not least, probably you will have to do the routing and everything else. But what I wanted to show you is when the manufacturer gives you a one piece, one object 
that is only one block like this, there's still a possibility to break it up and use it. So if you need details on how to do this, please don't worry. Uh, go back to your ePlan uh, specialist. I'm sure that ePlan, Retail, they will give you the right contact or support to actually do this. Thank you. This was Roland from ePlan showing you again how things can become more efficient when you start using ePlan.